For better or worse, I get the McDreamy thing a lot. Move over, McDreamy. I've never seen the man in action. In fact, I've never seen a full Grey's Anatomy episode. But you asked for it, so you got it. A month ago, you were in med school being taught by doctors. Today, you are the doctors. First of all, I've never heard a speech given that dramatically on an intern's first day. Nobody really talks like that. It's much more practical. Five of you will crack under the pressure. Two of you will be asked to leave. This is your starting line. This is your arena. This sounds like Hunger Games more than it does Grey's Anatomy. Uh, no, I'm not gay. Uh -huh. it's, uh, it's just that, uh, you know, you were, I mean, you were very unforgettable. And, and O'Malley, I, Yang, Gray, Steven. We do get ready together in the mornings. There are locker rooms like this. It's funny to say, but because doctors spend a lot of time in books while in medical school, they're not the greatest at interacting with others or maybe even showing interest in the opposite sex. So I've seen situations like this happen a lot where someone's trying to make conversation but they're not great at it, so it comes off very awkward. It's funny, but this is very accurate. Your first shift starts now and lasts 48 hours. Your interns, grunts, nobodies, bottom of the surgical food chain. Residents don't work 48 hour calls anymore. They're capped at 80 hours per week. Maybe they go a little bit over that sometimes, but 48 hours is just non-existent. And this started because of the Libby Zion law, which is sadly the name of a young girl who died because residents who were so overworked, they missed catching a diagnosis and she ultimately died. Run labs, write orders, work every second night until you drop and don't complain. On call rooms, attending call rooms, <laughs> when you can, wait. The on call rooms look exactly like this. They're very plain, they're very basic. The hospital doesn't budget or allocate any money towards them. You have to change your own sheets. The mattresses are basically plastic, uncomfortable. So this is very accurate. Dr. Bailey, that's shotgun. That means every test in the book, CT, CBC, Chem 7, tox screen. I love how simply the attending came in and made that decision. He basically saw maybe the chart, maybe a brief explanation of what happened, why the patient came in, and he already has a shotgun approach to this. This is not how medicine works, that's ineffective. You need to have a presumed diagnosis in place so that the labs and tests you order actually confirm a diagnosis. You can't just throw stuff against the wall, shotgun against the wall, whatever he said, and hope something sticks. The only time that is appropriate is if you have no idea why a young, otherwise healthy patient with an unknown history comes in with some sort of weird presentation, then you can start ordering a broad range of tests. But they knew she had a, a, a seizure history, so why are they doing a CT scan? I need more info. More info, please. Hello? You're so lost, what are you like? This is where these medical dramas get me. They make it seem like the doctors do everything from A to Z. They diagnose the patient, they run the tests on the patient, they draw the blood, they transport the patient. We have nurses, we have MAs, we have transport staff, we have PT therapists, we have respiratory uh, therapists. I understand that they're trying to build up character, so they're trying to show as much of them as possible. I'm just gonna insert my fingers into your rectum. Why fingers? I, I, just one finger. But you missed a lot when you first started out. No one was ever that mean. People wanted you to learn, they wanted you to get better. If you go into every procedure or every moment within residency with the concept that you wanna learn and you wanna do better, people respect that. So I don't, I don't necessarily get this uh, hatred that <laughs> these poor interns are getting. Yeah. Our cafeterias are bare bones with usually not the greatest food available. In fact, this is what surprises me most about hospitals. We try and tell people to eat healthy and stay healthy, but the only options to eat are pizza, burgers, chicken fingers, the most unhealthy foods possible. It's crazy to me. You know what, I'm not, I'm not the doctor. Um, I, I'm a, a doctor, but I'm not. Katie's doctor, so I'll go get him for you. Very common situation to find yourself in, especially at on nights 
when you're covering for the entire hospital and some medical emergency happens, the family wants answers, they have a lot of very important questions that they need answered, but you don't know the patient. You need to put a lot of information together rather quickly and create a thought process that the family can follow along with you so they know what's going on. You don't have to give a direct answer. A lot of residents, young residents especially, think that they don't have the exact right truthful answer, that they're bad. That's not true. Even seasoned attendings know that there's times to say, we don't know yet what's going on. Dr. Shepard, he's over there. <laughs> Why did I know this McDreamy guy is gonna pop into scene? Oh wait, did they not know each other? Dr. Shepard, this is inappropriate. Has that ever occurred to you? I agree with her. In a position of power, you should not be involved in these types of situations. They don't happen that often. As much as we like to believe that there's so much love and drama going on in hospitals, it doesn't happen as much as you think it does. But I have a little, she may come back for more with the wonderful Dr. Shepard. Let's move. Usually we wear eye protection because if blood squirts out into your eye, it's pretty dangerous. So at least have goggles or the face shield the, that comes attached to the mask. Oh. Not bad. That was rather quick. I guess that's for TV's sake. In reality, there's a lot of conversation that occurs between the attending and the intern, um, especially with identifying landmarks. They'll often ask you really hard questions and we call that pimping. And they'll ask you questions that are unrelated to the case. So you prepared for this case, but they'll ask you something else. It's very common. Okay, give him a clap. BP's dropping. He's choking. Come on, George. Today, pull your dramatic. balls out of your back pocket. Let's go. <laughs> Who talks like that? Pull your balls out of your back pocket. 007 is a state of mind. Well, it says the girl who finished first in her class at Stanford. We lived with the vending machines. I used to eat Snickers galore when I forgot to bring my healthy alternatives from home. Mr. Jones has junky veins and he really needs antibiotics. I should start a central line. So start one. You don't know how. I... <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, I'm very passionate about this. Starting a central line just because you couldn't get a vein with a, a needle prick is crazy. It's crazy. You're putting the patient at risk. Dr. Bailey, I don't mean to bother you. But then don't. It's Mr. Jones. Is he dying? No. Then stop talking to me. She should have gone to a nurse because nurses have way more experience than even doctors in getting a, a blood draw. Next time you wake me, you better be so close to dead. There's and that patient doesn't look <laughs> alive for some reason. Oh, no, he blinked. Okay, he's alive. Are you sure that's the right diagnosis? Well, I don't know. I'm only an intern. Here's an idea. Why don't you go spend four years in med school and then let me know if it's the right diagnosis? Ooh. That's what we call a cowboy intern. Basically, a cowboy intern is someone who is so confident in their diagnosis that they start their treatment, they don't explore any other options, they don't have a good differential, meaning other options of what the illness could be. Nurses keep the hospital running. Without them, we would not be able to do our jobs. A lot of times, they'll catch our mistakes, they'll be able to identify things we could be doing better. This is the most drama I've ever seen happen in the first 24 hours of being an intern. Thank you so much. The rest pants not working. Phenobarbital, loader with phenobarbital. Okay, when you say loader with phenobarbital, that's not an order. You need to give the dosage. The nurse needs to say back to you to make sure that she heard the same thing that you said. Otherwise, if the nurse misheard you and you didn't even give the instruction of how much to give, they can give any dose and that could be lethal to a patient. So that's not real. Heart stop. Okay, so heart stopping, that's the code blue. I've talked about this before. Now the patient is dead. If the heart has stopped, the patient is technically dead and you have to work to revive them to get their heart started back up again. As the resident in charge, you have to instantly give roles to everybody. You do chest compressions, you do this, you give the medications, you monitor the rhythm strip. The most important role being chest compressions. You have to do chest compressions. You cannot stop doing chest compressions. So if you have one person that's giving bad chest compressions because they're tired, you instantly have to swap them out because chest compressions is what extends and saves lives. So right now, them not doing chest compressions is awful. The first thing you do is chest compressions. Wait. Charge Whoa, I hope she's not gonna shock the patient. 
Oh my god, please tell me she's not gonna. No! No, what are you doing, Grey's Anatomy? No! Still VFib, nothing. No! Oh, she's in VFib? Then why does it sound like she's flatlining? I've never thrown up in a hospital. I've never seen a doctor throw up in the hospital unless they were sick. Yeah, when things go wrong, you get nauseous. That, that's part of life. I mean, there, there's difficult moments that happen. There's times where you're gonna be humbled. I mean, every day I walked into the hospital as a resident, I was humbled. There's a reason why we call it practicing medicine <laughs> because we're all practicing, we're all learning, we're all adapting, we're all trying to get better. And the human body is a crazy, crazy thing that we still don't have perfect knowledge of. So I feel for her a little bit, you know, just a little bit. A little dramatic, but I feel for her. You There's our man. a seizure disorder. Now you're saying it isn't? I'm saying that I don't know. Oh, what is Oh, my man McDreamy saying my line. Real doctors are comfortable saying, I don't know because in reality, there's a lot we don't know. And when cases get very complex, like this young girl who's otherwise healthy is having seizures and then her heart's stopping, it's a very unusual case. Very, very unusual. I want someone else, a doctor who knows what they're doing. You get me someone else, someone better than you. These types of conversations do happen. This is real life. People get very, very upset. It takes a lot of patience to deal with these issues. I've seen doctors get mad and snap. What I do is if I feel like I'm getting angry as well, I step away from the situation, let both parties cool down, and then come back and explain calmly what we're working on. Because if you just say, we don't know, with no follow-up, it seems like you're not doing anything. But if you say, we don't know, but here's what we think it might be, and here's what we're working towards, that's a much better answer. He'll be fine, right? Tony's gonna sail through. You have nothing to worry about. Promise. Patients need reassurance. You need to give honest reassurance without over-promising them results. What are you doing? I'm suturing a banana with the vain hope that it wakes up my brain. <laughs> <laughs> suturing bananas, suturing pig's feet is something very common that med students and interns do. So that's, it is true. She's gonna die if I don't make a diagnosis, which is where you come in. I can't do it alone. I need your extra minds, extra eyes. I <laughs> This is very dramatic. Every day we have uh, meetings known as rounds where we sit around a table like this, we present a complicated patient, we give the history, we give the physical, we give the test results, and we all brainstorm ideas of what it could be, how we would approach the case, and it's very good practice even if we already know the outcome, but sometimes we don't know the outcome and we are brainstorming like you said here, but it's not this dramatic. You can't comment, make a face, or react in any way. We had sex. Bum, bum, bum. Katie competes in beauty pageants. I know that, but we have to save her life anyway. Okay, she has no headaches, uh, no neck pain, her CT is clean. Um, there's no medical proof of an aneurysm. First of all, this is known as a HIPAA violation. Uh, they're basically talking about a patient's case using her name in front of other people who are not involved in her case, and that is strictly against the law. They can get sued for millions of dollars, and rightfully so, because you shouldn't be discussing patient information in elevators. In fact, in most hospitals, you'll see a sign in the elevator that says, please don't discuss patient information. Wow, that was quick. I His heart had too much damage to get a multi bypass. I have to let him go. It happens, rarely, but it does happen. The worst part of the game. Ooh, and he gave that promise to the family, saying that he's definitely gonna make it. Tony's heart had a, a lot of damage. They, we, we you don't do this type of conversation in an open setting like this. You invite the family in into a counseling room. You explain what happened, but you don't do it out in the open like this because this is just going to end badly. You shouldn't let the fact that we had sex get in the way of you taking your shot. Shouldn't have had sex, period. Dr. Shepard. Name the common causes of post-op fever. Uh, the five W's, bruh. Can anybody name the common causes of post-op fever? I don't like this is UTI. Wind, water, wound, walking, wonder drugs. Yeah, she the got the five W's. W's. How would you diagnose? I hope she says CT scan. Spiral CT. And not like BQ a BT scan, scan or something. Provide O2, dose with heparin, and consult for an IVC filter. No! She just gave all of the options that you have in, in uh, testing somebody for a uh, pulmonary embolism, as well as treatments that you may give to someone uh, with a pulmonary embolism. I'd know you anywhere. You're the spitting image of your mother. Welcome to the gang. 
Welcome to the game. I've never heard a doctor speak like that. Welcome to the game. You never want to sleep on a stretcher as a resident because it's bad luck. It basically says that you're going to wind up on a stretcher. You have the on-call rooms, you have couches you could knock out on. So sleeping on a stretcher, that's just bad form. I should uh, go do this. You should. The romance is real. I'll see you around. I thought McDreamy would have a little more muscle on him. He kind of is looking a little frail there. <laughs> Boom, there you have it. My first Grey's Anatomy episode is in the books and you were here to experience it with me. All in all, I'm pleasantly surprised with this Grey's Anatomy episode because I assume there's gonna be just way more loving and sex and that's what the whole show is gonna be about. And in reality, it did take a, a deep dive into how a resident feels and what their work is like. So I thought that was pretty good and it surprised me. Medical accuracy, obviously weak, but I don't think most people watch Grey's Anatomy because they want to become doctors and they want to learn about the human body. I think it's an entertainment show first and foremost, and I think it does a great job at that. I told you if you got my Real Doctor vs. TV Doctor video to 10,000 likes, I would watch an episode of Grey's Anatomy, and I did as promised. So now, if you want me to watch another episode of Grey's Anatomy, one of your favorites, or The Good Doctor, or House, leave it down below in the comments. Get this video now to 15,000 likes, which I know you're totally capable of because the last video you got to like 19,000 likes. Please subscribe to the channel because the more subscribers we have, the more content and better content I can constantly create. As always, stay happy and healthy.